Welcome to Makeshift Play, the podcast where we do improvise comedic scenes. We are going to generate some random words, tell stories based on those words, and that is going to inspire some scenes. Our first set of words are floor, information, gold. Floor, information, gold. First thing that comes to mind hearing those words, just dungeon dragons, just stories, quests, gold, adventure. Do you play Dungeons and Dragons? I have a little bit. I get, have had a little bit of experience. My first exposure was uh, Dungeons and Dragons 3.5, which overly complicated uh, system, but I... Mm -hmm was the studious person myself is and to literally took notes on the dungeon masters book and player's handbook so anytime i'm referencing skills and abilities in fifth edition i'm also referencing 3.5 3 as in the same process um tend to play rogues monks and racially specific elves yeah, I like elves too. I have a, a related story. Have you heard of Rifts? Rifts or Rifts? Rifts R I F T S, and it's a game. Yes. Okay. If it's the same game I'm thinking of, it, which... it's a role playing game that is similar to D and D. Yeah. Um, okay. Multiple class system. You can. Were you able to change the classes in that game? I don't remember, but here's the story. I played that game when I was like 12. My friends and I got into it for maybe a year or so. And I remember I was running an adventure just for my one friend, but which is kind of a weird thing to do. But hey, we were 12. So I was running the adventure and um, my friend's character died in the adventure. And he was upset about that. So I remember he poured soda on my head. Interesting, because interesting way to take it. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's play with this. Let's setting, say a medieval tavern. A couple of adventures, just sitting at the bar after hard day's work. Oh, man, can't believe we got out of that cave. Well, Orin, without your mighty axe, we wouldn't have made it. Oh, my axe is mighty. Mm. You know, Grog, I don't know if we could have done it without your spells. You're damn right you couldn't have without my dwarven magic you wouldn't have been able to slay the dragon. I already miss uh, carving into that giant neck of his. Nice, mighty swings with this glorious axe. <sighs> yeah, I just, I just have one issue, Orin. What is that, Grog? I noticed that the treasure was not divided evenly. You noticed that? Oh, I, I know. I, I noticed it all right. Well, I mean, I have to admit, I mean, I am the muscle here and I can carry all that. I'm not sure about you and your uh, wizardly ways, if you even have lifted anything heavier than a book. You listen here, Oren. I'm not going to tolerate your bullshit excuses. I'm going to take this cup of ale I have here <laughs> and pour it on your head. Ah. 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 Yes. <sighs> Feel the wetness of the mead. <sighs> In my orc tribe, such waste of ale is such a disgrace. Well, there's more where that came from, Orin. If you're not willing to divide those gold coins equally. Mm. Very well. <laughs> Let's say one bag. One bag for me. 
Well, that entirely I, depends on how many gold coins are inside the bags. I never learned how to count. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you're lucky that wizards are so wise. I'm going to open up these bags. Let's see. I have 21 coins. And in your bag, 23 coins. Oh, Orin, I take this elven wine. Wait, and I douse, I douse your crotch in it. Oh, look at all the wine on your crotch now. You got a purple crotch. You mark me purple? <laughs> and yet you have 21. That doesn't that mean you win? Oh, Orin, you fighters are so stupid. You don't know math. You don't know the meaning of numbers in Dragon Blackjack. I should take you by your beard and drive you out to the street for wasting such alcohol. Listen, I know you're upset about the alcohol situation, but given that you have exactly two more coins than me, if my math is right, which it is because I'm a goddamn wizard, we could take one coin from your bag, put it in my bag, and it would be equal. That is all? Yes, you dumbass. I just have to move one coin over, and that'll do it. Okay, I will watch you. Okay. And gonna... What, what? You have some more commentary, Oren, as I do this? No. By all means. Okay. I'm gonna take a coin from your bag. Yeah, as you do that, I dunk your head in the nearest glass of alcohol. <laughs> That's how you do it without wasting it. Grab the beer, chug it. Ah! I cut that to hit. cut to a distillery on Earth. So you see, sir, I feel like we should actually reduce the alcohol content of our product because. Half the time, people aren't even drinking it. They're just sort of throwing it at each other in, in a festive way. It's a fair point. And I mean, unless we're going to invest in some cleaning products, it'd be perfect. I mean, or we can make a game out of it and come out with colored alcohol. Uh, you know what, boss? I don't know if that's the best uh, term for it. Um... Maybe marketing could uh, have another pass at that. We could call it colorful alcohol. Colorful alcohol, or maybe rainbow alcohol. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And then we'll have I, a tar. Well, we we have a target demographic built in if we go with rainbow alcohol. That is true. So there are certain states we wouldn't be able to sell it to then. Um. I mean, it'd probably be legal everywhere, if perhaps frowned upon in in some communities. There's potential in that. And for our first set of sales, we can, oh, we can come up with gear that people can wear. So that, like they can wear like beer goggles and like, and not the police kind of beer goggles, just goggles to protect their eyes from the beer and outfits that would show the amount of uh, colorful rainbow alcohol that's been splashed on. Cut to one year later. Wow, Conrad, you're all decked out and you got that rainbow beer and those goggles. You know what? I've spent so much money on this and I consider myself one of the best champions of it. I just had to get all splashed out first to just get the most unique outfit to reign my championship. Yeah, it looks good. You look like you're very proud of who you are. You know, something's bothering me, though. Your outfit is just missing something. Well, allow me. Okay. And I dump orange all over you. You know what? A splash of wine towards your crotch, too. Conrad, I feel like yeah. you're a magician. End scene. You know, like a wizard. Mm-hmm. All right, our next three words are engagement, consciousness, trance. Engagement, consciousness, trance. Consciousness 
makes me think about a procedure that I had about a year ago. <sighs> so I was uh, I was and am having wrist issues. I have carpal tunnel. I go to the doctor. Doctor says, try taking ibuprofen. I take one ibuprofen and it hurts my stomach really badly. Having chronic stomach issues, I go to a gastroenterologist and he wants to do an endoscopy where they put a camera into your stomach and they look around. I'm very uh, nervous about the procedure. I've had surgeries. I'm just like, I'm afraid of the doctor in general. I'm just, I'm a hypochondriac. If you go to the doctor, they can give you bad news. I don't go to the doctor. I'm not going to get any bad news. And in particular, for this procedure, they they put you under. And that's just like a weird concept to me that I'm going to be involuntarily made unconscious. It just feels really weird. So I, I go forward uh, with the procedure and it felt a lot easier than I thought it would be. I, I don't know what, what would not be easy about it, but it is literally like you're on the bed. And then my head felt a little weird for two seconds. I'm out. And then I woke up. So <clears throat> it, it went better than I thought it would. But I do remember after I woke up, I was out of it. And I was like saying things that didn't totally make sense. And there was a nurse there who was, I, I guess his job was to just like watch me. And I was talking to the nurse and uh, in retrospect, I realized some of the shit that I said didn't really make sense. And the whole time he was like, yeah, yeah, OK, because I, I'm sure he's done this like many times before. So his job is just like watching people wake up from anesthesia and just like say weird shit. And he's just like, yeah, OK, uh huh. Right. Yeah, it reminds me when my brother uh, got his wisdom teeth pulled and they, coming out of the anesthesia, he was just definitely talking random stuff and coming up with different things that like you possibly want to create. I'm just like, Hey, sure. Go with that. And right. the times I've come off of anesthesia, I've not experienced that firsthand. So. Cut to a recovery room. Uh, so yeah, nurse, um, oof, that surgery, that was a lot easier th than I, than I thought it would be. Oh, I'm glad you thought so. I mean, you were out for hours and to be honest, it took a little while to get you off of the uh, anesthesia. So we are thankful that you are out of uh, awake and conscious. So is there anything you'd like or like to say? Well, hold, hold on. I mean, I am kind of out of it, but I want to clear this up. You're thankful that I woke up? Um, did you not want to wake up? Well, it makes it sound like you thought that there was a good chance I was not going to wake up. No, everybody, there's this tolerance range when it comes to anesthesia. So sometimes people wake up right away. Other people, it stays in their system a little bit longer. You are the later case. Okay. Um, okay, nurse. Why do you have prayer beads in your hand? The Lord Jesus just means that much to me. And he's always with me. As he is with you. Okay. Especially in these holy times. Yeah, I mean, it's fine that you're passionately Christian, but when when I was waking up, I, I saw you looking at me and praying with those beads in your hand. Oh, he was watching over you. And all in part, thanks to me. Okay. Um, and also, as I was coming out Thank of it... Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I heard you calling my family and you were saying something like, he's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. I'm going to get fired. He's not going to make it. Well, you had that. Oh, you know, you should have seen the show I was watching while I was praying over you. Just, I love these medical dramas and I didn't think he was going to make it either. I mean, the two of you, it just, I don't know if I was just projecting him onto you or, but I just felt compelled to pray for both of you. And you both made it. Cut to, you, cut to heaven. So God, uh, you decided to save that guy, huh? Oh, yes. 
Uh, Jim, he's been so through so much. I just thought he deserved to still wake up and experience the world as I've created it. Yeah, you know, as your angel Gabriel, I've always found you to be kind of fickle. Like sometimes people ask you to save someone and you do, and then sometimes you don't. Oh. It's the roll of a dice sometimes. I mean, some people botch it. Some people are just that lucky. I don't know what you mean, some people botch it. It seems like you are kind of deciding who lives and dies. That's what I want them to think. But in reality, is like, I just love the invention of dice. And I figure, why put all the stress on me to decide who lives and dies and whose prayers get answered when I can just take a die, roll it, and sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's in between so that they get a partial recovery or some of what they need. It's so much more relaxing instead of hearing all those thoughts in my head and all those prayers. I mean, you saw uh, Bruce Almighty, right? All those thoughts in his head and then all those sticky notes, and then he just decided to put it on his computer and just say yes to everything. You see well, what happened to the world that way. So I figure my solution works a little bit better. I, I just don't know if it's humane to take this human invention of the die and then literally it decides if people die. I, I don't know. Was this some kind of like godly joke that you were playing on people? No, but now that you can, uh, thought of it, it sounds even better. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, this place does get a little boring. So what's what's a little humor? Oh, God, I hate to ask, but that roulette wheel over there by the cloud, is that is that what decides whether hurricanes happen? Oh, that old thing. So so I f end up having to fire Peter a long time ago. So when people come up to heaven to see if they're in or not, they have to spin that wheel. Sometimes, oh, just oh, rare okay. occasions, okay. it sends them right back into their body. Oh, so that's the that's the near death experience. It's caused by your roulette wheel. Near death experience. It works out sometimes with um, those cases where like people shouldn't come back. That's a different story. Those people are a little bit more traumatized when they come back up here. They get an extra spin. All right, it's like a it's like a Price is Right rules kind of thing. Um, so for for this meeting. Um, God, I know uh, you have a lot on your plate, but on your day of rest, the seventh day each week when you have your your nightly poker game, um, is that what decides whether there's going to be war? <sighs> is that obvious? I mean, I am the almighty and all seeing, but man, my ability to read others in this game can't do it. I just can't do it. And almost every game I end up tossing the table over and that agitation just triggers into whatever country we happen to be floating over at the time. Those poor people. Yeah, let's just hope we, we don't float over, I guess, land anytime soon. Just stick to floating over water so we just start fish wars. <sighs> I haven't seen a fish war in a while. And seen. <laughs> fish wars. All right. Our words are fill, grounds, still. Fill, grounds, still. So growing up, I had to do a lot of help around the yard work because... My dad was a lot of do-it-yourselfer, so we put an in-ground or above-ground pool in. I would help uh, fix some of the house. Like there was one case where he went into the bathroom and noticed the floor was weak. Stayed, decided to uh, stomp on it and went through the floor. And yeah, I had to help with that as well. Uh, he had to. Tie out some things. Um, 
that side of the house is actually sinking a little bit because that was the addition of the house. So it didn't have a basement. And yeah, we had to elevate that a little bit. And so much fun, that house. Everything. <laughs> they, they used to joke that it was just one of those houses that everything would go wrong with it. Like that Tom Hanks movie. <laughs> Cut to Bottom a house. house. Cut to a house. So, uh, Bobby, I noticed right here when I step on it, I feel like there, there's some give. There's a little bit of give when I step right here. Some give? Well, just, just that one spot? Uh, yeah, Bobby, I, uh, I've been, uh, you know, tiptoeing around here. Okay. Snooping about. Okay, yeah, stupid. And uh yeah, and I I just noticed a little little creak and a little bit of a depression in this one spot right here in the middle of the kitchen. Trash? You're saying the house is sad? That's exactly what I'm saying, Bobby. I feel like we have a sad kitchen. But it wasn't just me. Every time I walk in here, it was just somebody came over me. It was just like the room just Hold me right in. I think your mother's been making salads. Salads? She's been making some melancholy salads. Melancholy salads? Yeah. How? She, she adds melon and collards. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's not like her at all. I mean, salads aren't even one of the basic four groups here. Make salads. I, I tell, series going on. I, I tell her. Quit making the melancholy salads, hun. You're going to depress the kitchen, but she don't listen. And now look, right in the middle of the kitchen, we have a, a one to two inch depression. One to two inches? Oh, oh we know it. We're just going to be right down in their neighbor's house. Oh. I mean, I don't want to be with them. They all vegetarians. Oh, God, no. Definitely don't want to be down there. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's let's make lunch. I'll just okay. open up. I'll just open up the refrigerator. I good. I'll go for that. I'm I'm famished. All right. I'm just gonna take out some of the cheddar. Oh no, Bobby. What? What? What's wrong with the cheddar? This cheddar has post traumatic stress disorder. PTSD cheddar. Was it? You know, mama's <laughs> mama's probably been grating it too much. She's been shredding the trip the ched. It's ched shred PTSD. But the chunks are all different sizes. That's how you can tell it's PTSD, that the trauma of the different sizes. Wow. The big chunks and little chunks and fine little grains. And what are we gonna do with all this? It like Cool. Could we just mend it back together somehow? Some, like, say, some say it can be fixed. Although the scientific community has not reached consensus about cheddar PTSD. I'm just... Uh, I'm getting the shakes just looking at it. Oh, now we no. got the room that makes us sad. Now this is just makes us discombobulated. I, I dare not look in the freezer. All right. But we gotta eat something for lunch, Bobby. So maybe look away as I open up the freezer. I gotta look. Maybe uh, just pick. All right. What did it? All right, I'm I'm taking out the fish sticks. Oh no. Oh, Bobby. Well, not the not the fish sticks. Yeah, the, the those fish, are my favorite. The fish sticks. They have generalized anxiety disorder. G I D. Yeah, it's it's like a free floating anxiety that's not specific to any object or event. I thought they were just shivering because they were cold. No, you, I'm sure your mom is involved in this somehow. Oh my god. Everything she touches is traumatized in some way. I don't know. What, I don't know. Like, even my voice is getting affected here. Wow. Oh. Oh. I, uh, okay, I just need to get a snack here. Uh, let me try the cupboard. Cut to cut to a therapist's office. Um, sir, I really specialize in treating um people, 
And um, so just to be clear, I, I have a I have a PhD. I'm an expert in psychology. You know, I've okay. read the I've read the diagnostic statistical manual front to back. I promise, Good. I promise you, um, a a fish stick cannot get an anxiety disorder. But but it's look at it, it's shaking. Um, I mean, there's yeah. no other explanation. My mother did this to it. I mean, it it is shaking. I don't know if you put some kind of vibrating device in inside of it, but um, heavens no! Why would I? Why why would I put machine in my food? You know what? The, this does kind of sound like um, you you might have a disorder yourself, sir, whereby you kind of project your disorder onto foods, and then you kind of make up a story about how the food has the disorder. I have these disorders. I'm heavens. I doc. If that's true, what can I do? I and mean, can you fix them too? And you are a doctor. I mean, yes, I, I I do have a PhD. Um, then help. All right. The first step is admitting the truth. So I want you to open up that fish stick, and I want you to take out whatever might be inside of it. Whatever might be inside of it. Yeah, whatever's making it shake. Just take that out of it. I, I swear, I didn't put anything in there. So okay, All okay. Right. I'm gonna peel it open now. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What are they, now? What's what are they doing? They're, they're, it's like they're dancing. You seen this, right? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> uh. You know what? I think this fish stick does have a disorder. End scene. <laughs> All right. I feel like we treated the topic of psychological disorder with uh, respect. We made some jokes, but I don't feel like we punched down at anybody with those jokes. All right. I don't think so either. <laughs> <clears throat> Our words are faithful, yard, communication, faithful, yard, communication. Faithful makes me think of, I was brought up Catholic. I went to an after-school program. I went to a public school, but then once a week, um, I think it was like Thursdays, all of the Christians in the class would walk maybe like half a mile to this Catholic school that was down the street. And in my classes, it was pretty much just Christian and Jewish. So like the Jewish kids would stay in class, then us Catholics would go to this after school program. And, uh, you know, it was boring. I remember I asked the teacher, um, what's wrong with using a Ouija board? Because the teacher was like, don't use a Ouija board, you know, for whatever bonkers reason. And I remember being like, yeah, but it's just like created by this this you know, corporation that's, <laughs> you know, they sell it in stores. So how, how could it be evil? And I remember her just being like, yeah, just, you know, don't just don't ever play with it. And the memory that the word faithful made me think of was when you're Christian, you, you go through various sacraments, right? You get like baptized, etc. And one of them is communion where a priest blesses a little like disc of bread and it represents like the body of Christ. And then you eat it and that's part of the religion. And I remember when I was, I think 12 or 13, the first time that I got communion, I remember thinking that I would have some kind of spiritual experience because at this point in time, like I'm, I'm as Catholic as can be, which I no longer am. But I thought like I would feel something <laughs> like this is the first time I am, I am accepting Christ in a physical way. And I, I remember um, the bishop, like the the parish bishop came to to do this because it was everyone's like first communion or something. And uh, man, he could not be more bored 
So it was this juxtaposition of me thinking I'm going to have a spiritual experience. Nothing happens. And the bishop like just can't give a shit. He's like, yeah, whatever. Here, take, take your bread, move on. Okay, let's cut to a church communion. So here we are gathered today, and in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let's bless the wine that is the blood of Christ. And in the same, we bless the bread, that it is his body, and that we will share in his sacrifice. In his name we pray. Wow, uh, Bishop McGillicuddy, I appreciate you having this private communion service for my first communion. I and mean, it really means so much to to me and my family. Yeah, just another day's work. Um, okay. Um, you know what? Honestly, I feel like this is going to be a big step for i'm going to like for the first time i'm gonna feel jesus's love inside me because honestly i haven't felt that yet but i figure that's what the bread does um are you ready to accept the body and blood blood of christ all right bishop put jesus on my tongue there you go Mm. all right um you know, Jesus is kind of stale. Why are you? We live out in nations here. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie, Bishop. I kind of feel the same. I feel the same amount of love that I did before, which is no love. Are you sure you're feeling no love? Or is that all the love that you are given? Oh, my God, Bishop. Oh, and sorry for taking the God's name, God's name in vain. Um, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, I thought I'd have to go to confession for that one. All right, but thankfully I had a bishop right here. But anyway, are you saying that because I felt nothing when I ate this cracker that Jesus has no love for me? That is not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying maybe what you think should be more love is all the love you can receive. That you are are currently receiving as much love as Jesus can give you. You just think it's not enough. Cut to heaven. Um, uh, God, it's me, Gabriel, again. So you flip a coin to decide whether people can feel your love? That was the old system. Now I throw darts. Uh. I'll make a game out of it somehow. I, I I just don't know about using these sort of luck based mechanisms to decide who lives and who dies. You know who has love in their heart. This doesn't feel just, God. But this is a nice homage to that fairy tale creature they call Cupid, right? Like, and using darts, it's like arrows and that board over there just represents their heart it just happened to miss a lot didn't you predate cupid by like eternity told you it's and just their fairy tale i'm just get to use it okay so you you just kind of you, you kind of do fan fiction based on the ideas that humans come up with i gotta entertain myself somehow all right cut back to earth oh my god dennis I read this this amazing Harry Potter fanfic. You did? Yeah. They they totally ship Ron and Harry. It's amazing. They ship Ron and Harry. Yeah, and of course you know the fanfic lingo. That means that like that those two are in a relation like a romantic relationship, unlike in the original story. They made a bromance? Yeah, oh my god, Dennis, they made a bromance. Wow, I this is totally unexpected. Like, who wrote this? Um, okay, let me see the author. The author just says G O D. She that's got to be an acronym. I mean, the glorified obfuscation of deities. The I 
what else? Who could it be? Go back to heaven. So you're really into bromances, huh, God? I mean, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What do you want? End scene. <laughs> All right, our words are nonsense, soul, medicine, nonsense, soul, medicine. I have a story related to both nonsense and soul. You tell. One of my sisters was into tarot cards. I'm not Ooh. into them um, because they do not predict anything. They're fakey, fakey nonsense. If you enjoy it, go for it. But obviously, it's not real. My other sister had a deck of cards on an airplane. We were taking a plane back from Puerto Rico. We were both <clears throat> we were both like pretty young. Mm -hmm. And my sister randomly chose a card from the deck. And I don't remember what card it was. Let's say it's the Eight of Diamonds, okay? Okay. She just randomly chooses the card. And then she passes me the deck, and I shuffle it, and I randomly choose a card, and I chose the Eight of Diamonds. So that is itself already incredibly unlikely. And yep. then I pass the deck back to my sister. She shuffled it, chose a card. It was the eight of diamonds. So we chose the same card three times in a row, which is incredibly unlikely. It, that's such an incredible story, though. I, for one, love the idea of Tara. I don't necessarily believe in it. I just love the play of mysticism and just in some ways it can like bring people together. In other ways, it can destroy things depending on how it's used and misused and it's a lot of these people are just really, really good at reading people. Sure. Which is a skill I would love to be able to have just to be able to read people better. But, eh. Okay, sada, sada. But also, the artwork that can come with tarot is quite fantastic sometimes. There's people that specifically do that. Mm -hmm. Sir, come into my tent. And I will read your future. Y you mean me? Yes, you, sir. I'm sensing a strong aura emanating from you. The first person who's ever said I had a strong anything. Do tell me more. Ah, uh, though your muscles are weak, your chakra energy is strong. My, my chakras? Yes, they are aligned. All seven of your chakras are perfectly aligned. What are, can you tell me more about these chakras? Yes, and, sit down. I will take out my tarot deck. Did, tarot? Yes, this deck of cards. Now I will explain how it works, okay? Hey. All right. This deck of cards is just ink on paper. And it actually predicts nothing. But if you make a big deal of it, and you kind of make it sound mystical, people can be confused and think that you're saying something insightful. But that has, that's nothing like what you were talking about, my chakras, right? Like, my chakras are real. Your chakras are a bunch of baloney, sir. There are no Wait. chakras. Nothing can be aligned. It's all fake. Fake, but I saw a movie once that like there was a person who like read people, but she did it in a weird, really like R-rated way in this movie called Mallrats, and like I thought that was real. Like she didn't talk about chakras or anything, but she read people. Well, and sir, I'm gonna be honest with you. I watched that movie, but I don't remember that particular scene. But I will say, you may not know this, sir, but movies are also not real. Not, but movies are my life. They taught me everything. They taught me about love. They taught me how to fight zombies. Like, I am prepared to survive thanks to movies. And now... You're saying that nothing they say is real? Um, I, 
sometimes what they say is real, but kind of the point of them is to just be interesting and entertaining. Uh, much like what you would come to a psychic for. It's it's sort of entertainment, and you give me uh, 10 bucks. And yeah, you know, it's all lies, but it's kind of fun. Okay. It's supposed to be fun. You said 10 bucks? Okay. I, I, I could do it. I could do 10 bucks. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, here, here you go. 10 bucks. Thank you. Let's see. I'll flip over your first card. <laughs> it is the Three of Cups. Oh, hey. sir. Three of Cups. That means sometime this year, you will face adversity. Wow. Sometime this year? I feel like it already knows me now. Yes, I, is, I, isn't it impressive how specific I'm able to be? Hey, it's like, it's like you know me. It must feel like you're inside of a movie right now. She's saying there's cameras here? That's right, sir. This is a reality show. Taro Ferro. You notice how I have like an Egyptian theme going on? Now that you mention it, I was wondering what that eye was. It's been so long. The eye of Ra. Yes. Yeah, so we're just going to need you to sign this release so that we can use your likeness on our, on our reality show. Just my likeness? Well, I mean, we're we're just gonna we're gonna use this footage, and then we might use you in commercials, depending on if we think it's particularly interesting. I, I'm I'm not so sure about that. I mean, what what if this isn't real either? Cut to his bed. He wakes up. <clears throat> oh dear, dear, were you yeah. having a dream? I think so. But it just felt so real. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we met and so glad you were there for me. Honey, I love you. Yeah. I I love you so much. Um you know what? Can we just take that again? Just say I love you again. We'll just do that one more time for the for the camera on the on the east side. The the, the camera? Wait. This is just like my dream. All right, I didn't all right. sign any waivers for this. Quick, quick, <laughs> quick, 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 being a drama queen, Conrad. Just, just do the "I love you" line one more time. Um, and I, as writer, director, and star, uh, I think I'll be able to nail it this time, and we we could finish this scene. Okay. Oh, it's such a weird dream. So real, honey. I'm so thankful you're there for me. I love you so much. I love you too. We pan out and we see this is one of the pictures on a tarot card, the love card. End scene. Kind of a, a sci fi twist. Went a little oh, sci fi. like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to do one more scene? Absolutely. The final scene. Our words are. Shed, climb, survey, shed, climb, survey. Uh, surveys remind me of quite a few things. So it takes me back to Animaniacs because they had this run on gag with these ladies in a mall that would ask, they hound them for a survey, asking if they wanted to, like, if they would eat beans and eat beans with George Went. And a whole iteration of jokes regarding that. Um, but it also brings to mind like how surveys are even used nowadays. Like first introduces kids in kindergarten, like, yeah, just take a poll and just get some results so you learn how to graph. And now surveys are like, okay, fill out this survey for customer service to see how we're doing. And most people just are so inundated with surveys now that they just don't care. Uh, unless they get something out of it. But even then, there's companies that like literally stack receipts of surveys that would give you $5 off their food and hand them to the customers that they know fill them out. Uh, cut to a food court. Um, sir. Oh, sir. Yeah. Oh, God, please. 
Please stop for one second. Please take our survey. I'm sorry, but I'm in a rush here. I mean, sir, there's it, there's a sale going on. Listen, I've been I've been trying to give out these free samples and have people rate them on a one to ten scale. Nobody's taking surveys anymore, sir. I'm gonna get fired if, if you don't eat You're this gonna... Cajun chicken. I need Cajun somebody... chicken? Yeah, somebody's got to eat these chunks of Cajun chicken and rate them on a one to ten scale. I'm gonna get fired, please, sir. Okay. Um, I, I I'd hate to see a fellow man get fired. I mean, unemployment bad enough as it is. So, uh, sure. Uh, what you got? Okay, thank you so much. Oof. I, well, before I, I give this to you, uh, what exactly did you mean by watch a fellow man get fired? Like you'd be okay if a fellow if a woman got fired? Is that what you mean? Oh no, just human. Oh, okay. Human. Oh, okay. You were just using sexist language for no reason. Is that is that what I'm hearing? I I didn't mean for it to be offensive to women. Like, is this part of the survey? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what, sir? I I think I could find somebody else to eat my Cajun chicken. I'm sorry. Well, that's the way you think, then by all means, go. Cut to five minutes later. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Made it to the mall. Got like an hour left before it closes. Uh, where's it? The, there's the map. Okay, let's go to the map here. Excuse okay. me. Uh, yeah. Ex excuse what, me. What? what? Uh, I'm in a hurry here. It's holiday season. Oh, uh, would you? Would you please? Please taste this chicken and rate it. Nobody's taking service anymore. Please, just please put this chicken in your mouth for me. Um, okay. I'll, I'm happy to help a girl out here. Um, sure. Oh, uh, wait, wait. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me, uh, let me just ask you a question first. Yeah. So you're happy to help a girl out? So you wouldn't, yeah, it's be, an happy, you wouldn't be happy to help a man out? Is that what you're saying? Well, we figure men have themselves, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help men too. Oh, oh, men can help themselves. Is that, is that what you're saying? Look, is this part of the survey? You know what? I think I could find somebody else to eat my chicken. Fine, I'd like, I got shopping to do anyway. To fuck with your survey. Uh, okay. Got to uh, another 10 minutes later. Uh, uh, oh, dear, dear geezer. Uh, what? Dear, dear geezer, um, do your taste buds still function? My, my buds? Yeah, because I need somebody to taste this chicken rated on a 1 to 10 scale. But if your tongue is kind of like so aged that, that you wouldn't be able to taste it well, then you wouldn't be a good participant for the survey. Sure, I can help a young and out. Uh, okay. Uh, what type of chicken was it? It's it's Cajun. Here, go ahead. Put it in your mouth. Okay, whip a snap. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Cut, cut to heaven. So, God, why do you use a tarot deck to randomly decide who it, who gets like really cranky? And disheveled when they're old. Though I just love the randomness of the cards. <laughs> and it's not so much the card that's themselves. It's just this deck in particular has just a nice array of different qualities you can go gauge a person on. So take death, for example. Just make someone so disheveled and cranky. Versus, say, the one of cups, and they'll just be so youthful and bright through the end of their days. And all these suits, specialty cards that just culminate a nice sphere of ranges. It gives a nice, wondrous variety in the world, now, doesn't it? Yeah, and that, that one of cups, I see, oh, there's a picture of a child receiving communion. Right there is. That's why it's so youthful and bright. Yeah. That was a favorite moment of mine. I mean, this, this poor kid just looking forward to communion. And it just happened that 
they were expecting just this wondrous sense of love. And for the life of me, I couldn't hit the dartboard that day. Okay. And oh, and his expression was so priceless yeah. that I had to put it on a card. Interesting. Oh, and look, that's seven of wands. There's a picture of, I think that's a fish stick with generalized anxiety disorder. Yeah, that was another one of those days. It just, ugh, me and my bread, uh, friends and angels were playing a game of Yahtzee and it just couldn't get the shakes out of me. I just, every dice I shook, the whole world was shaking. It just channeled into the fish that day. We, I guess we were over the ocean. Ah. Permeated into the water. Is, is shaking the, the Yahtzee dice, is that what caused the whole, uh, the whole flood that Noah survived? It was that flood, the next flood. Um, yeah, that city of Atlantis. Um, yeah, that, that happened there too. I, I, I mean, it's a fun game. Uh, everything's a game to you, isn't it, God? End scene. All right. That is going to conclude this episode of Makeshift Play.